All right, because I know this video could take about 24 hours if we were going to try to cover everything, um, we'll try to get as much as we can and as quickly as possible. Video hacking. But anyways, this guy, Christian, Christian, he's probably, I told Diana, the camera woman, I told, him, told her that he's probably been our biggest supporter, top 10 at least, for the last few years. And I don't mean that, that, that he's been the nicest to us. Let's just consider when I say that, that uh, the opposite of love is indifference. And he's been there for a lot of the way through. So why don't you tell us about your, first we'll start with your journey through us. What do you, what do you think about our journey through your eyes? Well, what do I think, you know, one is, it's really surprising that I'm actually older than them. I'm 30, I didn't know. Yeah, I'm 28, it's Timothy's 25. And they, seem, they all seem a little bit more grown than me. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I saw you guys like, you know, three years ago. And, and like I was just telling him, you know, the thing I liked about him was that they were actually pretty hot. And um, it was just refreshing to see hot people in the raw food movement because everybody in the raw food movement was like, oh, we're just so spiritual and love. And, you know, it's all oh, love and like, no, no, look freaking good. You know, do it with style or don't do it at all, you know. And they, they were doing it with style. Although I, you know, it, it was uh, a little bit upsetting actually watching you guys. Uh, switch away from raw food to an animal diet because you know as you go into raw food or any diet you know everybody always tries to convince you of failure you know and it's always like your brother oh all my friends did the raw food thing and they all gave up and you know and they all had to go back to meat and it didn't work and you're going to fail and actually when you guys did that it was pretty difficult because you know this is what everybody's been told is a raw food and then you actually switched away from yeah. it and it didn't work for you and you that's know, what that's i like about him he tells me what he's disappointed in rather yeah than, rather than only trying to like paint a perfect picture you know the raw bros we love to uh cry from a lie and laugh from the truth so uh if you can make me cry here i, I would really appreciate you for that <laughs> but, um, yeah, because well, you're you're sticking to the you're on a vegetarian path for quite some time now. Yeah, you know I've been raw food for about five years, and you know I mean that's not like hundred percent just all the time, but you know I've definitely gone up you know eighty or ninety percent, and um, you know there's a lot to it because you keep learning further techniques to it. You know first you just stop eating you know cooked food, but then you learn. Well, you can't just eat all this fruit, you know, you have to eat, you know, greens, and you have to learn, well, I need to get my essential fatty acids, so you have to use, like, hemp oil, and, like, you know, hemp oil, and spirulina, and guacamole, and, and all that stuff, and then there's biogenic, and then there's, you know, uh, juicerian, and stuff. Juicerian, wow. So before we get caught up in all the rabbit holes of different dietary paths, um, what I'm more interested in, and Christian, our friend Christian here, is that his nomadic-free lifestyle. You were just describing to me that you live in the trees. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I like this because we can find you plenty of people that don't have a per se home. I guess we and some people might. I'm really homeless. homeless. That, all right, so some people would call him homeless. He calls himself homeless apparently. And it's easy to find homeless people that are not there. They're not here. They're not there. They're just kind of lost and drunk. Or and I don't mean to put down homeless people. They're like that. I think they're finding their way. Hopefully. But this guy is obviously very intelligent, and he obviously has it a little put together what's going on in his mind and his heart, and he's pursuing a passion, which just so happens to lead you the homeless route. Well, you know, home, home is where the heart is, and um, I came to Kauai in 2011 my, after my father had died, and, um, and then my mom died while I was here. and. Um, and of course, between there, my grandma, I put my grandma on the ground, my cats had died, my friend had died, everybody was dead. And actually, I would say when my mom died, that it was by far the most empowering and liberating experience that I had, that everything that my life had come from in this world was gone, and I was on my own, with my own life and my own world, and I could go anywhere and do anything with it that I wanted to, and so uh, I took it as an opportunity, and I let my house go, put everything in storage, put my, uh, gave my brother power of attorney, and I got a Hennessy hammock and a synthetic sleeping bag, and I went off into Kalalau. And there was food growing everywhere, and I went up to the community garden with Ben, who was a master survivalist, and I started to learn. And actually, I live a very eloquent life as a, uh, as a homeless person. Um, in fact, I live way better than most people do in a home. I don't have a car. Um, I'm vegetarian. I don't have a car. I don't really consume very much resources. I 
can fly anywhere. I've traveled around the world. And, you um, can fly anywhere. I can fly anywhere yeah. I go. I'd much rather have it. I mean, I have, I, there's different levels of homeless. I'm like ultra high end homeless. I'm like the homeless dude in the neighborhood with all the multimillionaires and stuff. Yeah, because your real estate is probably, the, the real estate you probably typically stay on is probably worth millions. I'm yeah, assuming. most of my neighbors are like, if they're around, are driving Ferraris and stuff. And then, you know, but then there's like the other homeless people. I always say, you know, if you're going to go homeless, like going, going into the woods, don't, don't be homeless in a, a city, but you know, most of those people are addicted to drugs. That's, that's why they're homeless. That's why they're living in the city. But, um, yeah, you know, are not addicted to drugs. No. You're drug free? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's so taken, taken about 10 years. I don't think it's going to take much convincing to, to tell you how, I, I, once again, I might be being redundant right here, but how intelligent he is. And I just find it so fascinating that your idea on homelessness and like how you live in the trees and you were telling me about you have a, pal you, a fort in Istanbul or? A I have a, I have a, uh, a fortress in Istanbul actually because you know when you get your hammock and you, you come into the city, you got your hammock and it only weighs two pounds. Doing push-ups and pull-ups eating dinosaur wiener. Make sure they're right. I said that he was very cute and boyish in real life and he had a very nice smile actually and um, you don't quite see him, you know, online you just see him smiling and grinning but it's only when you actually see him in person you see his emotions and his charm and his charisma that, uh, that he's, uh, he's pretty cute, you know? I find that fascinating, I mean it's flattering and I just find it fascinating that like being on camera as much as we are that you would think someone would get the true picture but someone in the site falls him like right when he meets me he's like, oh you're different, I'm like different, what do you mean different, how, how am I different? You've probably seen a bunch of those on Facebook. He's just easier because he got... We're the raw, raw.